Political language is always a complete mess. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Economics Detective. I wanted to discuss uh, political language in pretty general terms. You see debates about this all the time, about specific issues, um, like what is the, the correct definition of right and left or conservative or, or the alt-right or an, a social justice warrior. And frankly, it's kind of unproductive, kind of really unproductive. And here, here's why. So the issue is that whenever you have words, uh, the, their definitions are, you know, utilitarian, right? You know, they, they serve a purpose, right? So you, you have a term for some group of people or, or a group of objects and, you know, uh, like chair and then, okay, a chair is something you sit on, but you sit on benches and stools, but they're not chairs. But, but what if you had something that was sort of like a bench, but, but only one person sat on it, would it be a chair? You know, things, things like that. Right. And, you know, we just, we hammer out definitions. We, we point at things and say, that's a chair, that's not. And, uh, you know, it all kind of, we kind of settle on an agreement on what is and isn't a chair, um, with maybe some gray area around the edges. That's fine. That's the way it should be. And, and you know, the definition of chair doesn't tend to change a lot uh, over time. I mean, unless sitting dramatically changed, we wouldn't really, um, we wouldn't really have to alter our definition. But when it comes to politics, there's sort of a, a like a hostile process. With chairs, we just all, we all want to communicate. We all want to be clear in, in what we're, we're saying to each other so that when I start talking about a chair, you don't think of something completely different, like you know, a stool or a bench, um, or a couch. Uh, but when it comes to politics, maybe I do want to, uh, you know, maybe maybe my goal is not to be as clear as possible. So, for instance, um, if I'm on the left and I want to uh, make someone who's like a you know, on the right, but like a moderate on the right, uh, look bad, then I might say, oh, you know, uh, he, he's, he's alt-right, right? Cause the alt-right are like, um, you know, they're sort of, uh, white nationalists or I, I don't even know what they really are because it's, it gets so muddled, but they're, they're somehow associated with, with maybe like Nazism or, or I don't even know. Again, this is, this is the problem, right? Um, but, my moderate opponent, I can smear them, I can make them look bad by putting them under the same umbrella as a much more extreme um, and easy to, to criticize, easy to, to ridicule member of the other side, right? Um, and, you know, similarly, if, if you, you see people on the right calling moderate Democrats social justice warriors, you know, in order to identify them with, you know, a group of people that... Uh, it burns down their campus when Milo Yiannopoulos tries to speak there. You know, you you can you can see this slide where uh, you you want to sort of muddle the issues and make your moderate opponents look unpalatable and bad by giving calling them by the name of of your more extreme opponents, people that they wouldn't necessarily endorse or identify with. Um, and then, and then similarly, for your, you want to make your own side look good. So um, you say, see people saying like, um, okay, so I've seen libertarians uh, say that uh, libertarianism is just the belief that I don't own you. Uh, I, I don't own you and I don't have a right to steal from you or kill you. You know, and, and that, oh, well, that makes libertarians sound great and it makes everyone who opposes libertarians sound really awful, doesn't it? You know, because cause that means they're, they must be in favor of stealing, right? And, you know, and it kind of fits into this whole mindset of, well, okay, t you know, we think taxation is theft and, and you know, most people who aren't 
uh, anarchists believe in some form of taxation, so they must believe in theft, right? So we, we you know, we define our own side to make us, ourselves look good. Uh, feminists have a version of this that's um, feminism is just the belief that women are people, you know, and, and then of course, neither libertarians nor feminists uh, are really um, adhering to their own really um, sort of flattering definition. They, they go for all sorts of other um, more specific topics that are maybe more controversial and, you know, more easy to criticize and oppose. But of course, you want your own side to look good and the other side to look bad. And so you, you skew definitions, you, you try to muddle things, you, you know, you, you try to make it so that, um, you can sort of gain the upper hand by forcing your opponents to use terms in, in ways that are, are, that make them seem bad, right? And, and to defend or to be associated with positions that most people uh, disagree with. So it just seems like there's no hope for forever having a political discourse where we all just agree on a set of terms and then those terms are um, adhered to and we all know what they mean. At least in the uh, abortion debate, people have settled on pro-choice and pro-life, which are the the things that the sides use to sort of flatter and and describe themselves in pleasing ways but you'll hear people refer who are pro choice refer to their opponents as pro life and vice versa so that's kind of a, a compromise where we all agree to refer to each other by the terms that uh, that flatter both sides, but then you'll also see people say anti choice and anti life or, or you know and and that's an example of trying trying to smear the other side, but it's so obvious in that case that you're maybe not convincing anyone. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just it's really hard to keep consistent definitions when we have competing goals for for our language and when uh, especially connotations for the language. You know, the whether whether a particular word has negative baggage associated with it or, or positive uh, good feelings associated with it has real um, impacts in terms of uh, what groups will be palatable to support and what groups will be able to wield political power.